Hi, and welcome to this different travel information session about our Sal Cante Trail trek and Machu Picchu visit in Peru. My name's Jenny from Different Travel, and I'm going to talk to you about this amazing trek, which takes you from spectacular Andean peaks and misty cloud forest towards the 15th century Inca citadel that is Machu Picchu. Before I talk about the itinerary, I just want to run through the Different Travel Company Health and Safety Assurance. Your health and safety is our top priority, so rest assured that we're taking steps to ensure you not only have a memorable experience, but a safe one too. We constantly monitor and follow the advice of the British Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, who provide recommendations and advice to British travellers about travel to certain countries. Health and safety is our top priority, so we will never operate a trip in an area where there is clear and present risk to our team members, whether that is due to a health outbreak, political instability, natural disaster or anything else. If travel restrictions in the UK or Peru prevent safe travel, we will look to either postpone or cancel your trip at no cost to you. Please note that at the time of travel, there may be enhanced safety and security measures in airports. Bag drop may take longer and you may need to provide a certificate of health or proof of vaccination. But we will inform you about any information pertinent to your travel arrangements nearer to departure time. So this is an exclusive fundraising trip run by Different Travel and you'll be trekking over high passes and through lush jungles. You'll visit Machu Picchu, the lost city of the Incas, and all your flights, accommodation and meals will be included in the cost of the trip. So where is Peru? This um, map here of the, of the world just shows you where Peru is in relation to, to the UK. Um, you can see that it's about a 15 hour flight away. Um, time zone is five hours behind the UK. It's the third largest country in South America. It's five times the size of the UK. The Incas were the first people to cultivate potatoes and there are more than 4,000 varieties in Peru. So you're very likely to be tasting some of these on your trip. And also another fact that you may not know, three quarters of the world's alpacas live in Peru. You're definitely going to come across some of those on your trip. So I'm going to run through the itinerary day by day. And then after that, I'll go on to some finer detail about things like luggage, accommodation, toilets and things like that, that I know everybody will be wanting to find out about. On the first day of this trip, you'll be flying from London to Lima. Um, it's about a 15 hour flight, um, possibly a little bit more. It depends on the actual airlines and the schedules. And once you land in Lima, you'll be transferred to a hotel where you'll have dinner and stay overnight. We get up quite early on the second day and go straight back to the airport because we're flying to Cusco. Um, it's a short flight and it takes us up to the UNESCO World Heritage City of Cusco, which is situated at 3,400 metres above sea level. Once we've arrived, we'll transfer to our hotel. The hotel that we generally use is a nice colonial hotel it's got a beautiful central courtyard and cosy rooms. And after lunch, we will have a gentle acclimatization walk around the San Blas neighborhood, which is one of the city's most picturesque districts and was originally the dwelling of the Inca nobles. We'll have lunch and dinner today and we'll stay overnight in Cusco for a following day. On day three, after breakfast, we start our important acclimatization trek from Cusco up to the ancient ruins of Tambo Mache. We'll continue past some more ancient Inca sites as we walk downhill to Sacsayhuaman. And that, that's where you'll see amazing views over Cusco, like the view in this slide here. Um, and then we'll return back to the city for an overnight stay. Now, the reason why we have these two days in Cusco is to help you acclimatize to the altitude. Um, it's 3,400 meters above sea level, it's pretty high. And you'll definitely notice the difference in the air coming from Lima and landing in Cusco, it will feel much thinner and it, you may find it a little bit more difficult to breathe and you may find that um, you get more tired. So it's important to acclimatize before we go to um, higher altitudes on the actual trek. It's a couple of images here, which just give you an indication of um, typical street scenes in and around Cusco. This is the kind of thing that you're likely to see as you wander around the city. 
So on day four, we're going to be starting the trek and we'll leave Cusco and drive up to Chalan, Chalan Cancha, which is um, 3,867 metres above sea level. On the way there, we'll probably stop at the Tarawasi archaeological site. And then when we get to the point where we're going to leave the vehicles and c continue on foot, um, we'll stop and enjoy our lunch and our pack horses and mules who are going to be transporting our luggage will be prepared before we start the trek. After lunch, we're going to continue trekking and we'll head towards the Humante Lake. It's a really beautiful, brilliantly turquoise Alpine lagoon, and you'll see a photo of it in a couple of slides time. So we'll continue to Soraya Pampa and then we'll arrive in our campsite in the afternoon. So you'll have a little bit of time to just kind of get used to the campsite and find your way around before we have dinner and settle in for the first night camping under canvas. Here's a picture of the lake. It really is absolutely stunning. So um, you'll you'll see this and this is, there's some other slides here, which are just nice indications of the type of landscape that you're going to be trekking through. On the next day after breakfast, we're going to be starting what's actually probably the most challenging part of the trek. We're going to be going uphill almost all morning and then we'll finally reach the highest point of the trek, which is Abras Alcante, and that's at 4,630 metres above sea level. So it's going to be a tiring morning, but once you get there, you're probably going to see some spectacular views because weather permitting, you'll have views of the mountains and the imposing peaks of Mount Salcante, which stands at over 6,000 metres tall. And here's a group of, of our trekkers who've, who've reached the top of, um, of the pass um, and are ready to continue downhill for the afternoon. So after lunch, we trek um, approximately three hours on a gentle descent and we end up at our camp in Andenes. So you can see from the altitude, you're going to have uh, can come down considerably from that, um, that highest peak down to 2,920 metres. Um, it looks like it might be easy, but actually trekking downhill is probably going to be quite difficult too, just because it's using different muscles and it can be a lot more tiring um, than you'd think. It, it can be deceptive. So we'll camp overnight at Andenes and obviously you'll have dinner um, at the campsite. And then on day six, it's going to be a bit of a change of scene because we're going to be trekking to Luke Mabamba and you'll be going through lush rainforest along the Santa Teresa River Valley. You'll pass through bamboo groves, pass by waterfalls, there'll be coffee plantations and there'll be orchards of bananas, granadilla and avocado. So it's a complete contrast to the past couple of days. Um, you've gone from high mountain peaks down into um, tropical rainforest, and you'll find that not only the landscape, but also the climate changes correspondingly. There's some images here of the typical flora and fauna that you might come across along the way. Um, and you'll be stopping for lunch and then trekking to reach the start of the Yaktapata Inca Trail. Um, and then to Lukmabamba, which is where our final campsite is. Um, this area is well known for producing some of the best coffee in the world. So we'll have a chance to have a demonstration and a tasting of the local coffee. And then on day seven, um, you'll be leaving Luk Lukmabamba and going to Yaktapata and then on to Aguas Calientes. Um, we'll have an early breakfast and then climb for about three hours before reaching Yaktapata. And it's at this point that you'll be able to see your first glimpse of Machu Picchu all the way across the valley. Um, so it's gonna be absolutely stunning and a real real sense of achievement that you've reached this point and that you can see where you're heading to tomorrow. So from here, we'll um, go past coffee plantations. The landscape all around is really beautiful and there's very diverse flora and fauna. And then we'll have lunch and then we'll head on down to Hydroelectrica and we stop there and then once we've had our lunch we um, walk along the railway track this is by running by the riverside and it takes us all the way into Aguas Calientes. Aguas Calientes is the town that's really the hopping off point for Machu Picchu um, and that's where we're going to start from tomorrow so when we get to Aguas Calientes you will ch check into a guest house You'll have an ensuite bathroom, you'll have beds, showers, flushing toilets. 
even though it may be quite simple, it's actually going to feel very luxurious compared to um, the campsites of the past few nights. And then the next morning, we will be setting off quite early to visit the ancient city of Machu Picchu. Um, we'll be transferring by bus and hopefully we'll be getting there nice and early to try and avoid the crowds. Um, it does depend a little bit on the timing of the tickets and so on. But the plan is to get you as untouristed visit as possible. The guides will give you a guided tour of the city. And then after that, you'll have some free time to walk around and you'll be able to experience spectacular views of the valleys and the mountains that surround this absolutely magical site. So from uh, Machu Picchu, we'll then take a train to Poroi and then we'll transfer back to Cusco. Um, we'll check into our hotel and you'll be reunited with the luggage that you left um, before you started the trek. Um, you've got two nights in Cusco, so you'll be able to unpack and settle in properly um, and you'll have dinner this evening. And then the following day, you've got a completely free day in Cusco. So you've got the opportunity to do some more sightseeing, to do some shopping for souvenirs. Um, there's lots of things to see and do in Cusco. And also it's kind of quite a nice busy city. There's lots of tourists there as they fly in from, from Lima. So it's actually quite westernized with cafes and pizzerias and and it'll be quite different to what you've had for the past few days on the trek. We'll have a celebration dinner tonight um, to celebrate our amazing achievements. And then a final night in Cusco before we fly back to Lima on the morning of day 10. Now, hopefully, um, as long as the flight schedules work out in our favor, you'll be able to have some time in Lima to have a bit of a look around the capital city of Peru before getting a flight back to London. Uh, it's quite likely that the flight back to London will be an overnight one and that you'll land the following day. So where do we stay? Well, you've got nine nights um, of accommodation on this trip and that's sp split into six nights in hotels and guest houses and three nights um, camping. So you'll have a night in Lima followed by two nights in Cusco. You'll then have three days trekking while, sorry, four days trekking um, and three nights of camping. And then you'll have a night in a guest house and then two more nights in Cusco. So the pictures on this slide just give you a bit of an indication of the kind of properties that we're going to be staying in. And then while we're camping for three nights, you'll be sleeping in tents, which will accommodate two people per tent. Sleeping bags and sleeping mats are provided but you will need to bring a sleeping bag liner. We'll provide you with a full kit list of everything that you're going to need for the whole trip. Um, and you may find that if there are items that you don't already have, you may be able to hire or borrow those. So what about the food and drink? Well, when you're staying in the hotels and guest houses in the cities, you'll be having your meals in either the hotel restaurant or in local restaurants. And then when you're on the tre trek, You'll be accompanied by a trek cook who will provide all the meals for you. So that will be breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, there can be quite simple meals and you may find that they're repeated a couple of times during the trek, but they're always going to be good, hot, filling meals. Um, quite often Andean cuisine. You may have beef, chicken, uh, rice, pasta, quinoa. There may be stews. Um, it's going to be filling food with lots of carbs, which is going to give you plenty of energy for the trek. If you've got any dietary requirements, for example, you're vegetarian or vegan, or if you have any allergies or food intolerances, we can cater for these provided that you give us advance warning. So please give specific and in-depth details at the time of booking. And if anything changes between you booking and the trip departing, please just get in touch with us and let us know so that we can update your preference, your, your needs and make sure that your um, dietary requirements can be accommodated. All the water used for cooking has been um, boiled and purified, but we would also recommend that you bring some purification tablets with you. Coca tea will also be available during the trek. This is a um, herbal infusion made from dried coca leaves and it can help with altitude sickness. So you may try this and you may find that actually it's, it's something that you enjoy drinking um, and that helps if you are suffering. 
So there's just a lovely image here showing a typical, maybe it's lunch or breakfast, just al fresco with the mountain backdrop. It really looks absolutely stunning. So what about the bathrooms? Because this is the question always on everybody's minds with many of our trips. When you're in the hotels and guest houses, you will have rooms with ensuite facilities. They'll have flushing toilets and hot showers. But during the, um, the nights that you're camping, it's likely to be quite a lot more basic. The toilets will be holes dug into the ground, surrounded with a privacy tent, a little bit like the blue tent that you see at the back of this um, slide on the right hand side. But there is a possibility that some of the campsites will have permanent toilet blocks, which will be a brick outhouse and a long drop style toilet. And you may find that there are flushing loos at the final campsite. Um, you'll need to bring your own toilet paper, both for at the campsite and also while you're on the trek. And you'll also need to bring some nappy bags to put any used toilet paper in so that you can dispose of that once you get to the campsite. Um, there might be some opportunities for bathing in a river. Um, so it might be a good idea to bring some um, biodegradable toiletries and also a small trek towel. And then the day before you visit Machu Picchu, you'll be staying in a guest house with ensuite facilities. So you will be able to have a nice shower after your three nights of, of camping. Um, please note that the facilities may vary depending on the specific campsite that you'll be staying in. Um, I think the best rule of thumb is be prepared for toilet tents. But if you get anything fancier, that's a bonus. During the trek, you're going to separate your luggage into two sections. Um, your main luggage with probably your non-trek clothes will be left at the hotel in Cusco, um, where it will be safely stored until you return. And then during the trek, you'll need to have a small trek bag, um, which will be carried by the horse or mule. And that's what's going to contain the things that you need for the actual trek. Um, you'll need to make sure it's in a waterproof kit bag. And there is a maximum weight limit for this, which is eight kilograms per person, including the sleeping bag. Um, that's going to need to contain things like um, spare clothes, um, any toiletries that, or wet wipes or things that you need for the actual trek. And then possibly things like a jacket for the evening and so on. During the daytime, you'll be carrying a day pack, which ought to be about 25 to 35 litres. And this will contain your water. Um, if you have a camera, you'll want to take that with you, obviously. Um, sunscreen, waterproof jacket, things like that. And your day pack should be one that's got a chest strap and a hip strap because this is a lot easier for you to carry. It's much more comfortable as the weight is distributed much more evenly through your body. So anything that you don't need for the trek, you can leave at the hotel in Cusco. The climate and weather conditions um, can vary quite a lot. Daytime temperatures range from 15 centigrade to 25 centigrade, roughly. Um, and when the sun's out, the sunlight is very strong. So it's important that you have a good high factor sunscreen. In the nighttime, it can get as low as minus 15. So it's important to pack layers to keep warm, both when you're in your sleeping bag in the tent and also around the camp. As a general rule, a t-shirt or a shirt and lightweight trekking trousers are suitable for during the day um, with waterproofs and warm layers in your back day pack as the weather conditions can change. Um, and then for night times, you'll need some extra layers and a warm fleece or a down jacket with windproof qualities. There is likely to be rain, so waterproofs are essential. And you'll definitely notice a difference between the temperature in Lima and Cusco because of the altitude difference. So talking about altitude, there's a little bit of information here about the different altitudes you're going to be reaching. The maximum altitude on the trip is 4,630 metres. Um, and you'll be starting off at sea level in Lima, going to Cusco, which is 3,400 metres. And then you will, the first camp will be a little bit higher than Cusco. And the high point of the camp, of the actual trek, is 4,630. But from there, it descends, you descend quite rapidly. Um, and you'll go down to Aguas Calientes and Machu Picchu at 2,040 metres above sea level. You can't train for altitude, but you can train for your fitness. So unfortunately, there's very little or really nothing that you can do before you go to try and minimise any altitude sickness um, symptoms that you might have. It's very indiscriminate and it's very difficult to know who's going to be affected and who isn't. 
Normal symptoms of altitude sickness may include headache, nausea, lack of appetite, insomnia, fatigue and dehydration. And when you arrive in a place of high altitude, you should really take it easy. Walk nice and slowly. Make sure that you keep really well hydrated. And also, even though you may not feel like it, eat well, because this will also help. Um, there's a few things that you shouldn't do, such as taking sleeping tablets or any medication in, that um, contains codeine. Um, but you just need to make sure that you take it easy. Um, if, you if you're suffering from altitude sickness, make sure that people know listen to the guides and take their advice as well. So I've got a few FAQs here, which um, I can answer. Um, and then if there are further questions that you might have, you're very welcome to contact the different travel office. Communication. So there may be a phone signal while you're trekking, but it's most definitely not guaranteed. However, when you're in the hotels, there is likely to be Wi-Fi in all, all hotels that we stay in. Um, we would recommend that you check with your service provider in the UK to find out about roaming charges and make sure that you have your data switched off to avoid any unexpected high costs um, from un unintended roaming while you're in Peru. Travel insurance, you must arrange this yourself. Um, your policy needs to cover trekking at altitudes of up to 4,600 metres and also helicopter rescue as a minimum. So your footwear on the trip, um, you will need proper hiking boots for this trip. Trainers aren't suitable due to the terrain that you're going to be going over. Um, the age limit has a minimum age limit of 18, but if you're 16 or 17 year olds and accompanied by a parent or guardian, then you are very welcome to join the trip. And there is no upper age limit. And if you have a medical condition, um, you might be wondering whether it's still OK for you to take part. Um, you would need to speak to your GP and have a consultation with them, explain where you're going and what you're going to be doing. Um, all medical conditions must be declared when you book. And if our screening process um, flags anything up, you may need to get a medical form signed by your GP. So how challenging is this trek? Well, it comprises of four days trekking and it is graded as a challenging trek. Um, the terrain varies. The majority of the route is undulating, but there are days when you're going to have some steeper ascents. If you haven't done an overseas trek before and you're worried about whether you'd be any good at it, you're definitely going to be capable, provided that you commit to adequate training, which is mainly lots of walking, in the lead up to the trip to Peru. So please don't underestimate the importance of training. Because the more training you've done before, the more familiar your body is going to be with what you're putting it through and the better it's going to recover after a long day's trekking so that you can start the next day rested and prepared. The views that you'll see along the way are breathtaking and those really will help take your mind off some of the tough bits of the trek. But it's your responsibility to come to Peru as fit as you absolutely can be. So how should I train? Well, the most important thing is to get out and start walking. If you're not a regular walker, then start slowly with short distances. And as you get more comfortable, increase your mileage and add in more challenging terrain until you can comfortably walk for several consecutive days on hilly terrain. Hill, working, hill walking should feature highly in your training to prepare your body for the terrain that you're going to experience on the trek. There are other activities that can complement but not replace hill walking, such as running, cycling, gym workouts, boot camps and so on. But building up your core and leg muscle strength is important. So exercises such as squats, lunges, push-ups and planks and crunches will really enhance your training. And these exercises can be done at home, so you don't need to get a gym membership in order to, um, to get going with some of those types of exercises. You must take your training seriously and you must arrive as fit as you can be so that you get the most out of this challenge. So who is right for this challenge or who's this challenge for? Well, this is just a bit of a snapshot of the typical um, mix of people who go on our treks. There's people who want to kickstart a healthier lifestyle, people who are celebrating a big birthday or maybe starting a new career. There's people who are keen campers and walkers anyway. And then there are people who like a bit of luxury 
and for whom this is really pushing them out of their comfort zone. There's people who are dedicated to the charity that they're fundraising for. Um, and there's people who just think that it looks like um, like a challenge or it looks like fun. What kind of support will I get? Well, if you're fundraising for a charity, their team will support you through the challenge with your fundraising. You'll be provided with a kit list, a full trip dossier, training guide, discount vouchers and more. And in Peru, you'll be accompanied by professional English speaking local guides and a first aid trained different travel tour manager. And you'll attend a, a pre-departure meeting, which may be online because on some of our trips, people come from all parts of the country. Um, and that'll be with your teammates and with different travel. How much does it cost? Well, the trip cost varies according to departure. So please visit our website for details. The registration fee is payable at the time of booking and you then choose one of the following options. You can go self-funded where you pay for your pay your own tour costs balance and you're welcome to fundraise separately for any charity of your choice, but this is not mandatory. Any fundraising undertaken may not be used for your trip costs. They need to be kept separate. You can take the sponsorship route where you fully fundraise for your chosen charity and this includes your tour cost balance and a donation to the charity. Or you can take the flexi option where you pay your own tour costs balance and you fundraise, fundraise an amount for a charity of your choice. So what's included on the trip? Your return flights, um, the international flights from London to Lima and the domestic flights from Lima to Cusco, including airport taxis and supplements are all included. All transport in Peru and accommodation in three star hotels or guest houses for six nights and tents on the trek for three nights are included. All the meals as specified in the itinerary are included. There'll be local English speaking guides, porters and a full support crew on the trek. Trek permits and entry fees to Machu Picchu, a UK different travel tour manager and fundraising support and ideas and tips. There's a few things which aren't included, which are personal expenses such as drinks, souvenirs, etc vaccinations if required, travel insurance, tips for local guides and support crew, which as of uh, June 2023 is approximately 55 to 65 pounds, trek kit and equipment, and a Peru visa, which isn't required at the moment for British citizens, but might be for other, other nationalities. So if all this sounds like it's something that you would love to do, then you'll be wondering, how do I book? Please visit our website, www.different-travel.com slash all hyphen trips and search for Machu Picchu. And if you've got any questions that haven't been answered, then you could always email or call us. <coughs> Excuse me. You can phone us on 02381 449 447 or you can send an email to info at different-travel.com and my colleagues will be really pleased to answer any questions that you have. Hope you've enjoyed listening to and seeing this presentation about Machu Picchu and thank you for watching. <laughs>